Hey, how's it going, Jay? Hey, James, not bad, man. How you doing? Uh, not too bad. Uh, can't complain. <laughs> Good to hear. Uh, are you, uh, where are you at right now? Because I know you're from L Lindsay, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm actually in Oshawa right now. I'm, I was uh, I was born in Lindsay, and my uh, my mom's lived in Oshawa pretty much the whole time. So she um, she li she has a house now in Oshawa still. So it's it's pretty convenient because I do a lot of my training at Bruckman's as well. But uh, in in Oshawa, so I have a place to to stay at uh, either parents if I wanted to. So. That's uh. That's pretty well. My my girlfriend's actually from Peterborough, and she uh, she lived in Oshawa before she met me. So she's actually up in Peterborough today uh, doing some charity thing at Hutchinson House. Oh yeah, right on. Yeah, it's a it's a small world actually. Um, we uh, I I actually went to school uh, in Oshawa till I was about ten, and then uh, my uh, my mom met somebody, and we we went out to Winnipeg for about five years, and. Um, I, I have a older sister that actually she met somebody in Winnipeg and she had a baby and stuff, so she's still in Winnipeg. And we decided to come back right before high school. And then uh, my my dad promised me uh, he could get me a job uh, from uh, the local home building center. So uh, I was eager to start making money, and um, I, I pretty much lived in Lindsay ever since. How I know you were young, but how'd you like Winnipeg? Oh man, it's uh, <laughs> it's a cool place. I got a lot of friends actually out there still, so I keep in touch with uh, quite a, quite a bit of uh, people out there. Um, so that that's one positive. Uh, the negative though is uh, that negative weather. I, I walked <laughs> to uh, <laughs> I walked to school one time in minus fifty five, and uh, they sent us home. That was with the wind chill, obviously, but they they sent us home at uh, lunchtime, and uh, of course we had no power um, at our house either. So it, it was a pretty crappy day. But I tell that's that's usually um, when people ask how, about how I like Winnipeg, uh, I usually start off with that story. The reason I ask is you said it was a small world. My mother grew up in Winnipeg and uh, left when she was eighteen and never went back. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't blame her. My sister will probably listen to this uh, interview, but uh, I don't blame her one bit. Well, we we, we can leave out uh, the diss on Winnipeg. I, I've actually been to Winnipeg in the summer. It's very nice, but yeah, the uh, the winters are a little rough there. Um, yeah. So last time out, man, uh, you won the flyweight title. I mean, first off, what was the celebration like? Uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty good, man. Uh, we were we were popping champagne. I think I drank out of the big four foot trophy they gave me maybe it was five foot and it was probably taller than me actually so it it was pretty good but um I didn't let it go to my head um it, it's easy sometimes uh you can let a win go to your head and then um you know you, you lose a little bit of motivation um sometimes the, the losses can teach you a little more than the wins right so uh I'm pretty eager to get back into um get back into the winning ways and uh well, um, my my coach Justin Brockman also talks about, uh, you know, you're not you're not the real champ until you defend it. So, so I got to uh, I got to defend it. Um, that that's the main goal. I was going to ask if you went right back to the uh, the gym after that win. I mean, did much change for you in the long run? Not really. Um, I uh, I got I got right back into it. Um, I uh, I had actually about five five or four four or five fights fall through. Um, every everybody had uh, all kinds of excuses, and uh, then um, I had this chance to go out to Singapore, and um, everybody was pretty supportive on that, including BTC. Um, I had like because I I I was definitely um, one hundred percent ready to fight and. Uh, the fights just kept falling through, so um, that, that's part of the game. You kind of have to expect it. Um, I, know, I know a lot of people that have even pulled out, you know, like the day before. I've had fights pull out the night before, um, 12 o'clock the night before, um, wh which sucks. It's a, that's a drag because you, you know, there's a lot of work involved, and then for someone to just pull out of the match, right? But um, 
Singapore was uh, pretty good to me. I uh, I went down there. It was a tournament style. I had to make fight weight four days in a row, so I had to make 125 uh, four days in a row. But it was it was pretty good. Um, I ended up winning three out of the four matches, and uh, the the last match was pretty controversial as well. So um, I think that also even helped. Um, even though I lost it, I think it it almost helped. Uh, my star power a little bit even um just because it was uh such a close decision um i, I rewatched it and it, it probably could have went either way but at the same sense uh it didn't go in my favor so I, i'm not going to cry over uh something that's already done now for those of us who don't cut weight um can you explain what it's like to have to do that four days in a row to hit that limit <laughs> So I actually, uh, I had to do the same diet I did for uh, Thailand, which involved uh, a low carb diet. So obviously no no bread and all the, you know, there's blows my mind how much uh, carbs are in every good food I like. So yeah. um, that was part of my diet. I also, uh, like I get meal prep from uh, a local business in Oshawa, Rampant Chef, uh, shout out to them. They, uh, to keep me on weight. Um, I get my products from my armor. They keep me with all my supplements and stuff. Uh, taking protein and stuff can kind of keep the weight down as, as well and keep you uh, nice and strong. So uh, shout out to my armor. My armor. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, making the it's obviously something I never did um, before. So. I knew I was confident I was going to be able to make it two days in a row and perform on the same day, but they didn't tell us until we really got there. They were calling it a hydrated weigh-in. So from whatever research I did from one championship, basically it told me that I could be 5% within my fight weight so I could have five extra pounds. Well, when we got there, they're like, no, like you got to be on weight four days in a row. So that was no problem. I, I, I was prepared, so uh, I got it done. I only had to cut, like, two pounds water weight every day, so it, it was pretty easy. I've cut 18 pounds water weight before, so that'll uh, that'll take it out of you. Cutting 18 pounds in the sun is definitely no fun, so I've, uh, I've done a little growing up since then. Um, no, I know. Yeah. We saw, like, Ray Borg this past weekend struggle uh, with that, that flyweight limit again. I mean, it's it's not an easy thing. No, no, it's not. Um, like I've even, I've even often thought I could do straw weight if I, if it came down to it. Um, actually, one championship, how they do it now, their straw weight division is just a hydrated weight, and you just got to be 125, but you got to be hydrated. So, um, that, that's pretty much the next goal in mind. But on this side of the world, unfortunately, there's nobody uh, big enough name to fight, so it's just not worth my time. Um, quite yet, but uh, that's uh, something I definitely want to uh, take advantage of in the future. Um, I'm I'm pretty much team one championship now. Uh, although uh, the UFC is still uh, a main goal of mine, um, you know, even even any top promotion really. Um, the idea is to uh, do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life, right? So. Absolutely. It's interesting because I was going to ask you about the UFC and if you'd been keeping an eye on the flyweight division there because, I mean, two reasons. One, they've only got 14 ranked flyweights right now. They don't even have a full 15. Um, the other is that their flyweight title fight, Benavidez versus uh, Figueredo, is actually going down the same night as your fight. Yeah, yeah I didn't even uh, – I knew it was coming up. I didn't really clue into it was the same day because, uh, you know, in the fighting scene, you do got to be a little greedy. So I, I haven't been paying attention to those boys as much. But um, it's pretty cool how one championship has uh, – they have an app um, that you can get that's pretty much identical to UFC Fight Pass. The only the only difference, though, is you don't have to pay for it. Yep, so, I've got it. Uh, yeah, so I figured uh, I figured you would. Most, uh, most guys that are right into the game are starting to uh, – starting to follow one just as much right like they're uh i believe they're they're like a, almost a two two billion dollar company now too 
Smith or something like that. Um, someone was telling me they started their name one because they're a, they started at a one billion dollar company. So like they're a lot bigger than people think. Um, I think the reason why we don't realize that is because they haven't come to U.S. yet. They haven't they haven't come to uh, North America. I mean, so that kind of um, obviously that's a huge market to get into. But if you notice a while back, uh, UFC came to Singapore, which is pretty much that their, uh, that's their territory. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think one was already planning on coming to North America this year. They've said it a bunch of times. So they're, uh, they're pretty solid organization. I can't see them saying they're going to come out and, and not come out. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty hyped up for that. They're going to need guys like me, um, when they do that, uh, regardless. So, um, but no, no, uh, like UFC has always been my main goal. Um, I, I've only recently switched, changed my mind here in about the last year. Um, I just like how they run things. I got to see my first one championship show when I went down there to Singapore. And, um, it, it just seems like they, uh, they take care of their fighters a little bit, a little bit better. Um, they're not like their their straw weight division is just as booming as their flyweight division almost. I mean, you could they just added Demetrius Johnson, so you you could probably make that case that maybe the flyweight's a, a little bit more popular. But they take care of their straw weights down there too. So whereas I think that's what UFC lacks, and um, like even you got Dana White and stuff constantly talking about how the flight flyweight division might be gone and. I mean, you got guys like Demetrius Johnson pulling off um, suplex arm bars in the fifth round, like, and he, uh, to me, he didn't get enough credit for that. Like, uh, I've tried to do that in the gym so many times since then, but uh, you no, know, uh, I, I just feel like they don't, um, they don't advertise the the little weight divisions enough to to really uh, become huge stars like that. Anyway, I think that's part of why Demetrius Johnson left, right? Well, absolutely. It's it's interesting because uh, I, we've we've covered one since we started up, and uh, you know we did get out. One came over last year. They didn't do an event. They did a, a media day though with a workout. They had Sage Northcutt there. Uh, they had Eddie Alvarez there, and they had Demetrius. Um, so they, you're absolutely right. They're trying to get into the North American market. They do, from what I can see, excellent numbers at the gate. Uh, anytime they're in Asia, especially. Singapore, like you mentioned, that's absolutely their home turf. Um, but, yeah, and then, like you mentioned, the strawweight division, well, Joshua Pascio just uh, defended that title uh, not too long ago. So, yeah, they definitely yeah. got it going on. Um, yeah, if you were going to do that, um, would you want to relocate at least most of your camps over to Asia, or would you try to do most of the stuff here, just go over for fights? Hundred percent. That's uh, I've I've already decided. I've made that that uh, I've made my mind up in that uh, decision a long time ago. I'm, I don't know uh, how much you follow me, but uh, I actually uh, I've been to Thailand three three years in a row. Now I didn't get to go uh, last year. It was the first time I I didn't go because I'm a roofer in the in the summertime. But I there's not too many uh, people getting their roofs done right around now, right? So. Usually I've uh, saved up all my savings and then I can be in uh, Thailand for two months uh, training while I'm not working, right? Because uh, I'm uh, I'm not one of those couch kind of guys, so um, I, I get bored pretty easy. So I, I need a I need a goal in mind. But um, yeah, back to uh, Asia. I got an Asian fetish, man, and it, it needs to be fulfilled. So. <laughs> That's a fantastic line, dude. I, I like that. Uh, I actually lived in Asia myself. I lived in Japan for a year and a half. Um, I loved it. Like it's it's an awesome place. Yeah, my uh, my head coach Bruckman actually uh, he uh, he fought there a couple times. Him and Antonio Carvalho. I've been working with uh, both those guys a bit. So Bruckman's really took me under his wing, but um, he got he got to fight in the the big stadium, I guess the the big famous one in um, Japan. There, Saitama, Saitama Super Arena. 
Right, right. So yeah, I, I guess it's cool. You get to sign your name and stuff down and downstairs, and like it's uh, it's quite an honor. I've I've actually um, I've been um, it's something that I haven't followed as much the Japan team because it it kind of died down, kind of died down a little bit there. So um, yeah. So anyway, um, I I would love to fight in Japan. That's actually become a goal of mine as well. Um, and with the Asian uh, the Asian team in one championship, I think that'd be uh, very possible. So. Well, man, I uh, I hope you get to do it. It's uh, it's a hell of an experience, and you know what? I I like uh, you know what? It, it's good no matter what when you see fighters who have more options. It's not just the UFC, uh, and I think especially for the lower weight classes because Bellator doesn't have flyweight. Um, so really, really, it's the UFC or or one. Huh. So with Pettis, um, I noticed they just signed uh, Sergio Pettis. Now would yeah. he be moving? He'd be moving up weight category. Yeah, he uh, he made his debut earlier uh, this year, and he was fighting at bantamweight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he he's he's pretty good actually. He he should do well. Um, I noticed uh, Josh Hill, Josh the gentleman uh, Hill there. He actually got signed. I think he fights. I believe he fights next week or something or this week. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be. It might be Friday at two thirty nine. Right, yeah, well, he he's a killer. Uh, he actually uh, he just beat my buddy uh, Jesse Arnett there, so uh, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of both of them. But uh, I uh, I personally knew Jesse a little bit, and um, Josh has actually um, announced a couple of my fight. Well, he announced my last fight at BTC, so he's uh, he's growing on me. Uh, I know uh, Justin Bruckman knows him pretty well, so. Um, I'm I'm hoping I'll get some training in with him uh, in the near future because uh, there's nothing like uh, there's nothing like getting your ass kicked. So I, I'm constantly looking for people that can kick my ass. It doesn't uh, doesn't bother me one bit in the training. Uh, that's how you get better, right? So iron, iron sharpens iron. Yeah, exactly. And a lot a lot of times uh, I I do have to go up and wait in the the training just to. Uh, to find those guys that can uh, put me in my place. So the, the more of them I, I get to meet, the more of an honor it is. Absolutely, man. Uh, let's bring it back to uh, BTC9 now. So you've got Gabe Sagman here defending the belt. First of all, how much of uh, your opponent have you seen? Um, I've done uh, – I am one of those guys. I've done uh, I've done a little bit of research, actually, Um I, I always do my homework, um, you know, uh, in the past I have, you know, I've drove myself a little bit nuts watching too much. So it's good to just know, you know, what he, what he's done. And then pretty much uh, the rest goes to just trust in my ability that uh, I'm going to shine that night. Um, yeah. Um, just to give you a little down low on how I think it's going to go. Um, I I, not, I noticed uh, he gasses out in his three round fights a little bit too, and, and I've been known to uh, even wear down a little bit uh, in the later rounds. Um, my last fight what did go the distance at five five minute rounds, um, but uh, at the same sense, I I didn't really have a strength and conditioning coach at that point. I I, uh, I think I just met Gord McVale um, down at RU Game in uh, Whitby. So I, I'm pretty much I, I got to already test um, how important it is to have him um, because uh, down in Singapore I, I noticed the difference of having a strength and conditioning coach. I go there about three times a week and it's already done uh, wonders for my uh, for my training. Um, he also he's also one of Brandon uh, Bad Bad Boy Cook, uh, the boxer there, local boxer. Um, he always has Gordon McVale in his corner as well. Good friend of Justin Bruckman's. Um, so it, it was an awesome connection to to have actually. So I think that's where that's where we're gonna be a little bit different. I think he's gonna fade in the later rounds. And um, e- even if you compare our old fights to old fights, um, I feel like I just got more of a heart than him. 
he called uh he called me the act he called me the paper champ trying to get this fight actually and that uh that pissed me off i don't know if he's getting a handshake from me at the weigh-ins we'll see um I got I got no bad blood when it comes down to it though. I mean, he wants what I have, and uh, you know, I I'm, I plan on full well um, defending that belt. So uh, I know his wrestling coach, um, Adrian Woolley. I've got to spar with him. Another training partner of his, Kyle Nelson. Um, my my other coach, uh, Joe Elliott, who built me up, pretty much raised me in the MMA scene. Um, he actually just took over Kyle's original gym in Muskoka last year. So uh, I've done a little bit of work recently even with uh, Kyle, actually. I sparked Kyle six days before I fought in uh, BC, for right before the title fight. I fought in BC, and I was sparring Kyle uh, six days before that. So I, I know he's got some good training partners, and uh, they know me pretty well. Uh, Crew Alin actually wrapped my hands in my first TKO de- debut. That's his head coach. Um, so I-, I was a little bit shocked that he had to talk a little bit of shit to get this fight. Um, he obviously didn't believe me when I told him. Uh, I told him on the comment. Um, I accepted the fight with Gabe before uh, Singapore, but BTC didn't want him. Uh, he was on a loss then. And uh, my manager told me BTC didn't want him then. So... Um, it put me in a bit of a weird spot, but I even said, "Hey, I know you're a tough fight." Um, BTC didn't want you; like it's not my problem. And obviously, he took offense to that, and uh, he had to say whatever he had to say to uh, try and get the fight. And uh, I guess it worked because now BTC wanted him. So, um, yeah, he he's fought some tough guys. Like his losses are against tough guys, just like myself. So. Um, I think it's going to be any. He's a black belt, so he's good on the ground, right? But it's a it's a good uh, good name to have under my belt as well. So I plan on uh, I plan on submitting him uh, right off the bat, and if that don't work, we're going to go into deep waters and I'm going to drown him. And you've uh, like you said, you got the experience uh, going the distance, so that uh, should give you an edge there. I think it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he, he fought about a month ago too, so. Um, you know, he, a lot of people are like, oh, he just fought. Maybe that's going to help him and stuff. Well, I just did Singapore, and I just fought four four times, actually. So, um, really, uh, I, I'm, I'm ready to go, too. We're both coming off some, some big performances. Um, and I think uh, I think the main thing that's going to show, though, is he hasn't fought flyweight since his debut. Um, I don't know if it's just being lazy or... Um, uh, not thinking there's the right matchups or not, but I, I strongly believe in if you're going to ever move up weight categories, um, it, it's it's pretty much got to be a weight issue or um, you know like to me you got to you got to take over take over the division and if there's no one else to fight then sure move up weight divisions. But he didn't do that. He fought at flyweight. I think he beat. Keegan Oliver, um, the distance. He, he's a tough kid. He has a crappy record now and stuff, but he's fought a lot of killers himself, Keegan. So that that's his it's his most notable flyweight win, but that's also his only flyweight win. Um, and uh, my, my buddy Manchild killed Keegan in 25 seconds. So um, now it doesn't matter. Uh, you gotta you gotta train to beat these guys on your worst night, right? So it, just because that happened for him doesn't mean it can go that way for me. Um, but I know where I stand with all these guys too, right? So it gives me a bit of insight. Um, I I think uh, I think the weight cut is definitely going to be a bit of an issue for him, and that's just going to be another excuse that uh, it's going to be another excuse he uses when uh, when I do beat him that uh, he just didn't to. He just didn't uh, perform at flyweight the way he thought he was gonna. Well, man. Either way, I am. Uh, I'm looking forward to the fight. Hopefully, uh, you know, no issues there, and you know, leave it all, leave it all in the cage, so to speak. Hopefully, there's no need for excuses. But I am looking forward to that. I hate to say I'm gonna miss it, though. I'm actually gonna be in Norfolk. I'm working that UFC event, but uh, we'll have someone uh, out there. For, I think Dylan, who actually does some work with BTC, is at the very least gonna be there. Uh, he works for us as well. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Dylan, uh, he's a great guy, actually. Um, I, I never knew he worked for you guys as well. That's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah, we actually met him at a BTC. Oh, yeah? Right right on, right on. Um, yeah, no, I uh, I think he's going to make weight. Um, I, I think it's just going to be uh, hard on him. Uh, it's always... Uh, it's always harder than you think uh, come uh, when you're in the sauna looking for a way out. So I think um, I, th- I think it's going to be a, a hell of a fight, though. And um, I, I think the guy with uh, just a little bit more heart is going to take this fight. So um, I, I think in my Dave Henry fight, I, uh, I was calling for a, a first-round finish and stuff, and I didn't get it. And I... Uh, Going the the five minutes and and not being able to tap them, I think uh, that humbled me a little bit more as well. So this this whole tra- training camp's been just about going that extra mile. So um, you know if if the submission present, I got a lot of first round submissions um, between amateur, um, the Singapore tournament, and even a couple in pro. So um, you know my, he's got to be prepared right off the bat for that. Uh, that famous armbar of mine, but at the same sense, uh, if that doesn't work, I got a plan B and a plan C too. All right, man. Well, looking forward to it. Wish you the the best of luck, man. And we'll uh, we'll send you this article when it goes out too. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. I, I really appreciate it, and uh, thanks a lot for your time. Anytime, James. You have a good one, man.